All right, what is up you guys? How are you doing today? We have some breaking news from Square Enix. And uh, this news, I'm kind of of two minds on, to be honest with you. Um, part of me is like, well, if this goes a certain way, it could be good. But at the same time, there's something in this article, in this breaking news, that makes me think, well, this might not be so good after all. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So the breaking news is, Square Enix is selling Tomb Raider along with their other Western studios. So when we talk about their Western studios, um, we're talking about stuff like Crystal Dynamics, we're talking about um, Eidos Montreal, and we're talking about Square Enix Montreal. Um, these are being sold. Now, of course, these studios, they created games like, you know, Tomb Raider. Um, there was things like uh, Deus Ex. Um, I think I think the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy game were also under these studios, if I'm not mistaken. And then they had some other stuff like uh, Legacy of Kane and uh, Gex, which they haven't done really anything with at all. Um, I had no idea Square Enix even owned Gex at this point. <laughs> uh, if you don't know who Gex is, well, I guess you didn't grow up in the 90s. <laughs> um, that's okay. Even people who did grow up in the 90s, a lot of them probably forgot about Gex. So, um, yeah, uh, here we are. Square Enix is making a major, major business move, selling off uh, Tomb Raider and their other Western IPs. And um, I believe they're selling them off uh, for, I believe I heard $300 million. I'm not sure if it's in this particular article, but... Um, I read somewhere that it was like $300 million, which, uh, to be honest with you, is kind of crazy, because, <laughs> I mean, that that's pretty cheap for something like, you know, Tomb Raider and, you know, these other studios. Like, I would expect them to sell it off for more than just $300 million. Um, I think that's pretty damn cheap. Um, and the uh, company they're selling it to are going to the acquisition uh hungry swedish holding company embracer group uh which i believe has like thq nordic and deckard games and a bunch of other stuff i think they own like a crap ton of stuff um so that's who uh these ips are being sold to um and yeah this is something that honestly i've since the news broke i've been really thinking about and trying to figure out okay is this good is this bad um, and normally, I, I think, I think if it wasn't for one particular piece of information that we got about this, I would say this is probably a good move. Because here's the thing: um, I don't really care for most of Square's Western IPs. Um, I don't really care much. You know, I, I never got into Deus Ex. I never really, you know, I, I thought the uh, the Avengers game was kind of a flop, and I didn't bother playing Guardians of the Galaxy because uh, I figured this is going to be another Avengers debacle. But um, the one game from the Western side of Square Enix that I did actually enjoy immensely was the Tomb Raider reboot. Um, I think the original Tomb Raider reboot that came out on the PlayStation 3... Um, I think is one of the uh, the best uh, games of that particular console generation. Um, you might be able to argue that you know Last of Us, the the original Last of Us was um, you know better, and I I would kind of say that it does edge out Tomb Raider honestly as probably the best game of the uh, of that particular console generation. But Tomb Raider, in my opinion, was a close number two. I in I loved that Tomb Raider reboot. I thought it was really good. Um, I enjoyed it immensely. I went back to play it, you know, a couple of times afterwards. I really liked it. Uh, now, that being said, the uh, subsequent sequels, I didn't think were as good as the, the original reboot. You know, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but they were still solid games. I did enjoy them. So overall, I've enjoyed the new era of Tomb Raider we've been getting, and to see Square Enix give it up, it's kind of disappointing. It really is. Um, you know, maybe this new studio can actually do something more with it. And that kind of ties into something that I think could be a positive here is that even though Square Enix is letting this go, and I think it's a really dumb idea to let it go because Laura Croft is such an iconic gaming character. Um, I, you know, I'm disappointed to see her go, but you know, 
if you look at what they did with the Tomb Raider series, you know, the original reboot, they really marketed the hell out of it. You know, they pushed it super hard and it was super successful for them. And then you have Rise of the Tomb Raider, which they also marketed pretty good. I don't know if it sold as well as the original, to be honest with you. I'd have to look that up, but um, I know it sold well enough to get another sequel. Um, but yeah, they, they I remember them marketing the hell out of Rise of the Tomb Raider. Everybody was excited for it. But then we got to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I don't remember Square Enix marketing Shadow of the Tomb Raider as much as the previous two games. I remember seeing the announcement trailer. I remember, you know, there was a, a bit of, you know, marketing here or there. But the marketing push for Shadow of the Tomb Raider was very um, limited compared to the previous two entries. And I always wondered, well, why is that happening? You know, the previous two games were pretty damn successful. What's going on here? So I personally feel that even though this new Tomb Raider reboot continuity has been really, really good, really, really solid, I think Square Enix, especially going into Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I think they were dropping the ball on the marketing. I don't think they were marketing the game as well as they could have. I don't think they were putting in enough of the um, you know, energy and resources needed to really push the game. Um, I felt they kind of let it you know, fall off. They kind of dropped the ball on that one. So at that point, you know, I started to wonder, you know, are they taking this seriously? Are they really as invested as I think they should be in this franchise? And, uh, you know, given the news that we have today, I guess not. Um, so, you know, that if Square Enix is not going to, you know, invest the, uh, the energy and the resources and the money that they need to into this, um, maybe it is best they sell it off so that another company can, um, so that somebody else can actually, you know, market, you know, this uh, franchise like it needs to be marketed. Um, because again, this is Laura freaking Croft. You know, this is this is the the video game icon that was a poster in every teenage boy's bedroom back in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> I mean, she's a very, very popular icon, and, um, you know, you can, I mean, just the name alone, Tomb Raider, you know, you can, you can make a lot of money off of that. Uh, you can do a lot of creative stuff with that. Um, it's a very lucrative IP, so, you know, Square is not going to take advantage of it. Maybe it does need to go to somebody else. Maybe somebody else can do it better. Um, so that, I think, could be a positive, even though I'm really sad to see it leave Square Enix, because, again, I thought they did a good job on the games themselves. I just thought the marketing could be better. Um, I am sad to see it leave Square Enix, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll get another reboot here in a few years. Who knows? Um, another positive that, you know, I, I, I almost want to take away from this, but I really can't, is that I thought, okay, so... If they're selling off the Western Division, if they're getting rid of that, then that means that they can put more money and time and resources into their Japanese games, which let's all be completely honest here, that's what really sells at Square Enix. Uh, that 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 you know that that is what Square Enix is known for. That's that's the money shot right there. You know, particularly uh, Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts are the two major ones. Um, but also Dragon Quest, even though I think Dragon Quest is kind of a distant third in regards to, you know, public consciousness of what people associate with Square Enix, but Dragon Quest is in there as well. But, um, you know, Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy are really their two major hitters. Um, and you would think, okay, if they're getting rid of the Western Division, they can focus more on Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. And for someone like me, and I think for most of us here, you know, that's really kind of the bread and butter. That's what we come to Square Enix for. Um, is Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. So if they can spend more time on those two franchises, that's good. That means that we could get more Kingdom Hearts games, more Final Fantasy games, um, maybe get these games sooner, faster, quicker. That should be a good thing, right? Yeah, that's what I thought when I first read this story. But when you delve into it a little bit more, Oh, boy, 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 boy. When you delve into it a little bit more, let me see if I can find it here. Um, right here it is. Okay, so Square Enix says that the cell will help it invest in forward-looking technology and getting rid of the properties enables the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, aka NFTs, 
AI and the cloud. The blockchain bet is turning heads, says the article. Oh, Square, come on, Square, 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 Square. Uh, let, 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 me, let me be clear about this, okay? Um, when it comes to blockchain technology and AI and the cloud and stuff like that, I find that technology in concept to be very fascinating, very interesting. Um, but when you apply it to gaming, I, I don't think it works. I don't think it works with gaming. If you look at some of the, the games in the last couple of years that have used NFTs, um, it's not really been as you know profitable or lucrative as a lot of these uh, companies, you know, these higher ups in the companies. Let me be clear about this, because there is a difference between creators and you know uh, the people managing things at the top. I don't think that this technology in gaming is as profitable as a lot of them originally thought it was going to be. And I don't. And I I think Square Enix is making a mistake here. I really do, because we don't care about this I mean I don't think anyone cares about this technology being in their games all right we go to Square Enix to play games that have you know fun combat that have um, you know really great stories that have that Japanese flair that Japanese creativity that we all love you know that we get in things like art JRPGs and um, that we get in um, you know uh, uh, animes and uh, stuff like that you know, we, uh, that, that, that's what we go to things like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy for. That's what we were interested in. You know, we, we don't, I don't think we really care about this technology that the higher ups at Square Enix seem to care about. And this really gets into a bigger issue, I think, when it comes to Square Enix, and that is the higher ups versus the creators. Um, when you look at somebody like Tetsuya Nomura or, you know, some of the other creators at Square Enix, um, you know they they they, they want to uh, you know their 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 focus is on uh, storytelling. Their focus is on um, you know uh, creating a, a very creative product. Whereas the higher ups, you know, they're I don't I just don't think they're they get it. I, I think there's a disconnect there. They're too business centric. They're they're too uh, focused on you know certain technology that I just you know. I, I just think there's a big disconnect. Let me put it that way. Um, I could go on and on about this, uh, and I probably will do a separate video. Actually, I do have a couple of video ideas coming up um, critiquing Square Enix and critiquing the higher ups of Square Enix because um, I do have some very strong opinions about this given some of the, sta some of the stuff that I've seen recently in the last few months. Um, I think I do need to make a couple more videos expanding on this, but I think there's a disconnect between the creators and the teams and the developers uh, the, the people actually making the games versus the higher ups who are managing the company. I think there is a disconnect there and I don't think the higher ups really get their own fan base. I don't think they get the core of who keeps them in business, of who makes them money. Um, so I do think they're making a big mistake. Again, if they were taking this money that they're getting from this, this sell and investing it into the games themselves, you know, into the story, into making better games, on the Japanese side, you know, I would be a little bit more positive about this, but this whole thing about blockchain, AI, the cloud, NFTs, this really has me concerned about the direction where things are going with Square Enix. Um, they talked about NFTs in a, an article a couple of months back, and I, I just, I don't, I don't know where Square Enix is going with this. I think they're making a huge mistake, and, um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I hope that they don't I hope that they don't screw up so bad that they have to sell the company itself that it goes bankrupt and it has to be acquired by somebody else. If Square Enix ever did um, go up for sale, I think it would probably be purchased by uh, Sony more than likely. And uh, I don't know how that would work with Disney and the rights to their characters and stuff for Kingdom Hearts because that contract was made with Square Enix and not with Sony. And it gets into a bunch of stuff that I really hope never comes to pass and never comes to fruition. I hope Square Enix stays strong and independent as a company. But yeah, tell me what you guys think about this down in the comments section below. What do you think about Square Enix selling off all these IPs in these Western studios? Um, do you think that I'm a bit paranoid when it comes to the um, the investments they're making in all this weird technology that I don't think really anybody who plays these games cares about being in their games? 
Um, or do you think this is actually a net positive overall? You know, let me know um, down in the comments section below. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Uh, click the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Follow me on Twitter. And this is Jessica James signing off.